Today we are going to look at uh, hourly energy consumption time series data. Just as a recap, in the past uh, video we looked at uh, airlines passengers data. This was a, a toy data set. Um, we used it to learn various methods that can be applied on time series data. So we looked at uh, trend and seasonality decomposition, some smoothing functions. Uh, also looked at uh, forecasting methods such as Arima and Sarima. Also a Sarimax that includes extra variables. Um, along with we looked at uh, Facebook profit, uh, an, an extension of it, uh, neural profit, and LSTM model as an XG boost. But uh, all of this was applied on a smaller data set. Um, but uh, in most uh, practical applications, we will be given a more granular data as well as uh, we, we would have a uh, lot more data. So the number of seasonalities um, will be different. The, the way the programs work on larger data set will be different. So today we are going to look at a more realistic uh, data set, um, which is uh, energy consumption data from no Northeast America. Um, so the description of this particular data set is provided here in Kaggle website. So you can go to this website and look at this, uh, the, this the description here. There are many data set that they have provided. Uh, but I took one particular data set, which is uh, named here as PJME hourly CSV. So the time uh, ranges from 2000 to December all the way to uh, 2nd August uh, 2018. Uh, so that's a pretty good data. And uh, the recording is available every hour and every day. And, uh, and the target variable that we are measuring is uh, megawatts uh, uh, energy consumption measured in megawatts so let's look at uh, what we can do with this data set so before uh, we get into the data so you usually i set up my um, folder structure or project structure in this manner so i have a time series data and then within that i have a, a data folder notebooks folder and images folder and within that, um, in the data folder, I downloaded this PJME hourly from uh, from Kaggle and uh, placed in this folder. So as you can see, uh, the data starts from 2002 December. So the data uh, ranges from uh, 2002 December to 2018 uh, January and the frequency is hourly. So we are looking at various uh, methodologies. So in order to access this data in different formats, I wrote a, a convenient function, uh, which says get train test uh, a generic function with parameters per for profit is equal to for uh, and uh, frequency. So let's look at uh, without any profit uh, format. So all I'm doing is I'm reading this uh, data set and I'm creating an index and then uh, dropping that particular column and then I'm sorting. Uh, this particular uh, uh, line of code is essential to make sure that uh, the data is consistent. Sometimes the file itself may have data uh, with a jumbled up uh, times. So this will sort those out. So this frequency term is used, uh, so we, as we have seen, it's an hourly data set. And if you want to f get the data at uh, a daily level or weekly level or monthly level, we can change this frequency and it will provide the data in, in, in that format. So once you have the data, I'm trying to create a training set with 80% of the data and then uh, test set with, uh, re which is remaining. And if the parameter for profit is equal to true, then we need to convert each of these data frame, train, test, and DF into uh, profit. So what's the difference between a regular data set and a profit data set is that you can, uh, each of these uh, the data sets will have uh, two columns, DS and Y. This is what it expects. Uh, so whereas uh, I added additional column called index, this is generally useful for plotting and I named it uh, DS to be different from DS, so date time index as the index. 
so if you plot um, this particular function you can see this data set uh, ranging from 2002 to 2018 and this blue is in training and this is in testing data set uh, let's look at a few different calls if you call it by default uh, this is uh, so the training starts from 2002 January to 2015 uh, April and the test starts from the remaining data set is uh, the test data set again here um, if you say the frequency is one day so it starts from as you can see it resampled at a daily frequency if the frequency is none and a profit is equal to true then we are seeing two columns ds and y this is what the profit expects so so far this is how we looked at how to look at the data um, now we are getting an interesting area of uh, understanding the data via visualizations. So when you have large amounts of data, visualization helps us to understand uh, what are the features that are important in any data set. Is, are there any outliers? Um, do we need to do transformations? Um, and what what is the quality of the data and so on? All of that can be looked at when we see the when we see visualization so when you do histogram plot you can see here it tells us the range uh, what is the minimum value maximum value um, and where is the mean so the same plot you can plot it as a time series data as you can see there are a couple of places where there are peaks of six uh, the data after 2006 maybe around uh, july 2006 or so there is a larger consumption of data also in 2011 60,000 megawatts and so on right so this is what it says um, to dig a little bit deeper we can look at 2017 data as you can see during August uh, and um, July August there is a more uh, higher energy consumption and also for some reason there is a higher peak here which is unexpected um, so maybe if you want to dig deep, deep into this data set, you can try to see what happens during these days. A uh, little bit more deeper, this is a month data. So you can see, looks like there are, you know, this is each of these, a peak, dip and a peak, a peak, dip and a peak. It looks like it's a daily data. And uh, there seems to be upward trend uh, during the first 10 days and then it kind of dropped uh, in order to look at uh, if this pattern holds uh, we need to look at multiple months uh, which we'll do a later part but uh, right now we see something daily pattern but in a within a month uh, there was an upward trend initially but then um, it seems to drop down later if you look at weekly data again you see a, a peak dip and a peak um, so again if you look at this two days this is, this is the peak and this is the dip and this is the peak. So, and the pattern continues, right? So this helps us to understand a uh, few things. Uh, one is that uh, there is a higher consumption of uh, data during month of uh, July and August. And uh, every day we see a, a, a couple of peaks and a dip. So if you want to look at uh, visualizations by group, because this is a time series, this is a convenient way of doing this one and any time series data you could do this. So you create additional variables like date, year, quarter, month and uh, day of week and so on. You create these variables and uh, once you have these variables, you can plot uh, by various categories. So the first one is I'm looking at energy consumption by hourly. So you can see hourly plot uh, every day. So this is across all of the years, all of the uh, months. So you can see uh, within a day, um, the energy consumption is lower uh, in the morning hours, early morning hours and la late night hours. Uh, but there is a uh, energy consumption which is somewhat peaking around 6 p.m., 7 p.m., 8 p.m. and so on. You can also look uh, weekday energy consumption. It looks like for some reason Saturday and Sunday the energy consumption is low. So all of these observations helps us to model um, uh, a model better, right? So you can use these observations as extra features 
to um, explain what's happening within the data so this is a monthly energy as you can see um, mostly june july august there is a bigger higher consumption whereas in january and december there is a, a somewhat medium con um, consumption of energy and with march and april it's lower consumption again you can plot a day uh, weekdays trends so daily trends you can see saturday and sunday the energy uh, the with by hour so this is uh, a weekday by hour and uh, as you can see the consumption on saturday and sunday are lower compared to the rest of the week so this again helps to in in regression in, in modeling so far we have uh, looked at the visualization and also we try to understand uh, which parameter which of these can be used as uh, additional features if you want to do feature engineering so now we are going to look at uh, ets decomposition trend and seasonal de decomposition that we did uh, in the past but the the difference between airline data and this particular data set is here we have daily um, weekly monthly uh, seasonalities so how do you specify period right so if you just plot the seasonal decomposition method from stats model this is what you look now you, you look at a trend which is the seasonality is very dense that we can't really see anything so instead of doing for the whole of the data set maybe, maybe we can take a small pe uh, period and look at it for example here i took um, from 2014 to 2000 uh, i look at subset from 2014 and but uh, I think it ranges from days 12 to 19 so it's a one week of data and I try to do if you do decomposition this is what you look you look at trend which is going upwards and going down the seasonality every day you see this particular uh, seasonality which is what we observed previously as well so you can decompose use the decomposition uh, either weekly as it shows here daily seasonality within a week so i took a week and looked at daily seasonality so daily seasonality is like you see two peaks that's a daily seasonality the weekly seasonality if you look at it uh, looks like on the weekends the data is dipping and the weekdays it's going up again so that's uh, within a month if you look at the particular month if you look at the data this is how the seasonality looks like the seasonality looks like weekends it's going down and it's going up again so the from here to here is one peak so there is a, a, a decent uh, uh, in a cycle going on here and within a month you see this is how it looks like Again, you can, um, one way of looking at it is like take a particular subsection of the data and do the decomposition and you can see the trend seasonality and so on. Or the other way of looking at it is you can sample a daily level, weekly level and monthly and then you can plot it as well. So that's another way of looking at seasonality. So there are multiple ways of um, looking at, uh, at seasonal pattern. and. Uh, one is to use uh, seasonal decomposition for a small section the other one is what we are seeing here which is to resample a daily level weekly level and monthly level and and and, and look at it so this one we are resampling at seven days and looking at the mean this one we are resampling at a monthly level and and plotting it uh, this data um so so far we have seen but the one of the challenge that we have seen is that how do we uh, what is the pattern? How do we specify seasonality in the modeling phase? Uh, it's not a, a trivial task. Um, our regular ARIMA, ETS, uh, smoothing functions, all of those are ideal for maybe if you have one kind of seasonality, but if you have multiple seasonalities, they, they seem to be not working as well. But before going into the methods, let's uh, look at, uh, write some useful functions. So I wrote here a couple of functions, uh, uh, plot and validate, uh, which we will be using to look at uh, our forecasting um, versus uh, what is the test data looks like. 
um, so essentially I'm plotting test data I'm plotting prediction data and I'm also plotting train data so that's what it is doing but it's also we are also doing a validation validation is essentially it's uh, providing us with the metrics like uh, we are calculating all of these metrics uh, MSC, RMSC, MAE, MAPE, SMAPE and we are printing them uh, at the end of uh, this function call so again we can look at uh, autocorrelation plots uh, you can see the uh, autocorrelation plots uh, uh, partial autocorrelation and autocorrelation plots um, the order of this one you can see the correlation is higher partial correlation is higher for one lag and after that it's also um, high but it's in the negative direction but it drops a lot after these two lags so the first uh, method we can try to do is uh, so um, first we will try to look at uh, auto RMU. so if uh, I if you want to draw at a granular data like at hourly level it takes really really long time so I did not want to try with that rather I started with a, a monthly level and then went down to a weekly level even weekly level was taking too long so these are some of the challenges that we did not notice in the entire data set but we are going to look, see in this uh, hourly energy data set so to call um, before calling uh, auto arima what I did was uh, I resampled the data at monthly frequency and you can see the data here Every, at the end of the month it's uh, it's generating a data point and it's resampling it's summing up all of the values across every hour every day uh, and every week of that particular month and then this is the value for January and this is the value for February and so on so I'm calling auto arima and I'm and saying the seasonality to, to be 12 and um, and I'm running this particular auto arima method so as you can see it went through various uh, configurations and it ended up with this particular uh, result as the best model so this is this is for seasonalities and this is for trend so the total time it ran about in 60 seconds uh, about a minute which is pretty fast but this is the monthly level so again after this one I tried to run at the weekly level and uh, weekly level was already taking too long but uh, there are many options available for you to reduce the amount of time so to first I downloaded um, P uh, auto arima function from this package and then there are many options here you can specify what the p could be maximum p could be minimum q to be uh, where should it start uh, maximum q minimum maximum q minimum q starting q and i only provided a few parameters here but there are many of them that can help you to restrict the other option that i used was also maximum iteration uh, which seems to be not working because maybe because i already provided all of these but uh, in general, um, you can restrict the number of runs uh, by using this max iteration. But if you have large number of uh, threads uh, that you can work with or you have a lot of time, you can actually uh, don't need to give these options. You, let, you can let it run. So for me, it took uh, for a weekly level for maybe 10, 15 iterations. It took about uh, 505 seconds and the best model was 101001 again one of the challenges uh, that um, you will notice is uh, so I'm, I'm providing it's a weekly level there are 52 weeks so I'm looking at uh, seasonalities within the, within a year so we cannot provide multiple seasonality within our EMA framework so that is one of the problems so again, if you look at uh, how the predictions are, even for a uh, weekly level, uh, you can see that the forecast is an average value uh, come to the test. So 
MAPE is about 0.12 and uh, SMAPE is about 0.114. It's not doing uh, that great of a job, um, but it's not too bad either. The other method we can look at it is exponential smoothing. Again, these are very basic methods, and when you have uh, very granular data, these are these methods uh, don't uh, do justice for this kind of data. So we are sampling at a seven-day level, and uh, we are forecasting. You can see the forecasting results here. Looks like it it is able to capture some cycles, but it it thinks that the trend is upwards. So but um so that's why the map is 27 percent um even though it looks like it's capturing some sort of seasonality but the trend looks like it's not in the right direction so this one is uh, the trend in multiplicative seasonality addition you can try various options and in every option i tried uh, um, the MAPE was not that great using exponential method. Here I'm using trend as additional and seasonal addition. This definitely brought down MAPE to 0.238, but it's still uh, not as good as uh, auto arima at that level, even though auto arima was just doing a uh, average uh, plot. So, so far we looked at auto arima and exponential smoothing functions. Both have, um, if you look at the MAPE matrix, it was 0 0.238 and uh, and it was 0 0.12, I think at weekly level. As you can see that the difficulty with uh, fitting models with uh, auto arima and exponential smoothing are twofold. One is there are multiple seasonalities and we don't know how to specify those seasonalities with, these, with uh, arima and exponential smoothing functions. And the second problem is the amount of time that it takes. So for auto arima, we looked at monthly level or weekly level, uh, but beyond that, we couldn't go even at weekly level, it was taking too long, right? So now we have to go at daily level and also with hourly level, it is going to be, take uh, a very, very long time and not, not a feasible approach uh, for practical purposes. So both, uh, both of these functions, uh, don't do that well. So profit was uh, designed to overcome these uh, challenges. So I'm going to run profit model with the default options. Um, so I'm here getting a data with a hourly frequency and a profit data set. So when you look at this data set, training data set itself, you can see uh, it has these two columns, DS and Y. That's how how the profit model wants the data to, to be in and I added this data time index this is an optional um, and I used it to so that the plotting functions externally will become easier so all I did here is I do a call uh, saying that there is a daily seasonality there is a weekly seasonality and yearly seasonality but what if there was a monthly seasonality? So uh, that I did not include. I just use the default options for now and then the fit the model. So you can see um, the model output when, when the fit is called is shown here. So the output of uh, prediction, the if you look at the forecast output, it, it gives the following output. It, it gives the day DS which is the same as uh, what we are trying to predict and uh, actually this forecast um, or the future is a data frame for the number of periods that we are specifying here we are saying frequency is hourly and then the periods is length of test data set so so this is how the future data frame is created and then when we say predict future data frame so it will predict uh, for for that particular time period so the output of the forecasting or prediction is you have a trend component you had y hat lower y hat upper and uh, you have trend lower trend upper and there are some additive terms and so on in the end if you see you see this uh, y hat yeah so this is our forecast so this is what is the uh, plotting that we have this so for some reason they gave the value at the end 
and the rest of them are uh, trends that go uh, y hat lower y hat upper trends are lower trend upper and so on so if you plot it you can see this is the forecast value and these are confidence intervals around it as you go further out uh, the confidence interval uh, seems to be expanding which says we have low confidence when we go out further out into forecasting so the again you can plot the components you can plot trend component weekly trend component yearly trend daily trend for the things that we have fit here so in order to plot it outside of um, profit we can actually use this plot and uh, validate function uh, that we wrote ourselves where we are passing a training data set testing data set and a forecast value and we are saying for testing data set y is, is the variable that we want to plot and for forecast y hat so if you go um, let's uh, recap uh, plot and validate function uh, we can look at um, so this is the plot and validate function so here what we did was we combined um, test data set and a prediction data set and then uh, we are plotting test prediction and we also plot train so this this plots train test and prediction and the validation essentially gives us the matrix that we are looking at so here outside of uh, profit we are plotting and validating so we are focusing on this matrix which is mean square error uh, root mean square error MAPE and SMAPE as you can see uh, MAPE is about 0 0.106 which is much better than um, both ARIMA and um, exponential smoothing uh, which was actually at a higher uh, granularity or at weekly or monthly level uh, you, you can also see the trend is in line with uh, our test data set. We can look at, uh, take a closer look at this particular section of the data. In fact, I looked at uh, June to August of this forecast. As you can see, the red line is our forecast and the blue line is actual data. And uh, more or less, we are capturing daily trends. It's going upwards when it's supposed to go upwards. Uh, but there are places where we are under predicting and there are places we are over predicting right so there there is still not perfect uh, but it's at least capturing some kind of a seasonalities daily seasonalities and uh, it's not um, it's actually doing a good job so there are a few things that we can still add um, we don't know whether it improves but we know that there is, there could be a monthly seasonality so the first thing we'll try to do is we can add monthly seasonality. So to specify monthly seasonality, we can give this add seasonality function. We can write whatever name we want. And this period is 30.5. By default, this period expects in a daily, um, in days. So 30.5 is the number of days. And for your order, uh, if you give the higher number, um, then it can it the model becomes more flexible and it try to inc incorporate a lot more complexity if you give a lower number uh, if the data is not not so complex then lower number for your order for example three is good enough again i'm adding a quarterly seasonality by giving number of days within a quarter um, and you can you can do the future data you can create a future data frame and then do the forecast um, so I'm doing uh, and plotting and validating so you can see uh, the maybe is 0 0.108 and uh, SMAPE is 0 0.0104 in fact by adding this monthly and uh, quarterly seasonality it actually did slightly worse than before also if you look at these um, the trends uh, more or less it seems to be in some cases over predicting and in some cases under predicting as before so adding options that make sense to us is useful but it may not provide the improvement that we are looking for so again we are going to look at other options uh, here we are going to look at how to add custom seasonalities and uh, and also how to add regressors and so on so here we are adding custom seasonality so i'm defining various 
uh, functions like for example is it a high peak month so where i am getting these functions how i am deriving these is is by looking at visualizations in the visualization we said uh, june july and august months have uh, its high peak and rest of the months are lower peak so i'm creating a function known as high peak if it falls in these months and if it's a mid peak if it falls in these months and if you and remaining ones are low peak same thing i'm doing for weekly and same thing i'm doing for hourly to some extent when we say weekly seasonality is equal to true or daily seasonality is equal to true um some of these already taken care but we are explicitly specifying these uh, seasonalities uh, using this conditional seasonality uh, add seasonalities method so here i'm adding uh, monthly seasonalities uh, uh, by adding these functions and this is how you you create them so the most important thing is the data frame that you have you have to the training data set for example that you create you have to generate all of these features for testing also you do the same thing and then uh, uh, again when you create the future data set the future data set should also go through these uh, uh, new 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 columns we should add these new columns to this future data set as well once you have all of these that's when you you're going to do the forecasting or prediction so when we fit all of these custom seasonalities or conditional seasonalities uh, you are seeing it is slightly better than adding uh, add seasonality monthly and giving 30 days uh, here it's slightly doing better but it's actually by adding more variables we actually did not do that great compared to a default uh, profit call so there are a few other things that we can try and see so there are trend uh, change points so these uh, change points happen for example let's say um, tesla cars are introduced in northeastern states and people are using it to charge during night time and that let's say teslas were introduced in 2010 and uh, so con energy consumption started to go up in the night so that's a change point so we can explicitly code some change point if we know at certain point some changes have been done if it's a electrical grid or so let's say they introduce some automation in distribution or let's say they introduce some new equipment somewhere that could be a change point so we can add our own change points but otherwise we can by default we can um, that the, it, it starts with certain change points and then within the model itself it tries to pick the which of the change points more makes more sense so to add change uh, you can you can add change points or you can also print out these change points here I'm not showing here, but uh, you can look at this particular uh, uh, URL to see how the change points looks like. So, so for example, in this particular plot, you can see there are 25 change points added by default, but there is a scale to it. So when you're modeling out of these 25, maybe one or two change points will be used uh, for modeling purposes. So these are the change points, default change points and uh, during the modeling it will pick the ones that are best suited for this particular data set so so to change uh, how again to fit this uh, change points there is a change point range so how much data far back it should look for these change points and also the prior scale by default it is uh, 0 0.05 you can allow the model to pick more change points by changing this to 0.5 and capping and flooring you can um, use this uh, cap and floor uh, attributes to limit um, for example if there are some outliers you can cap them to stay within certain limit by doing this upper cap, uh, uh, cap and floor uh, data points by adding data points so now we are going to look at uh, how to add regressors so adding regressors is very similar to adding conditional seasonalities here i created a, a variable one and zero um, based on whether it's a peak month 
uh, or it's a mid peak or a low low peak month so depending on whether or not they they fall into these respective uh, months so again i did the same thing for low peak and uh, low peak hours if they fall in these hours it's kind of a lower peak if it uh, rest of them are going to be uh, somewhat medium or high high peak hours so you can see uh, within my data frame uh, training data set for example i added all of these uh, features so which are shown here and now uh, I, I need to add training data set and testing data set as well as also um, uh, here you are adding these regressors in your training and the future data frame you do the same thing so for future I'm, I'm doing the make future data frame and I'm adding these regressor features and then and then I'm calling predict uh, function as you can see even by adding regressions uh, the MAPE value remains more or less the same so if you want to plot the components we have seen earlier we can call plot weekly yearly daily monthly and also the all the extra regressor that we added so here we are going to look at uh, finding best parameters through grid search so when you're running a model like uh, profit there are several parameters that uh, needs to be uh, given as an input but we don't know which ones are right ones and uh, it depends on the data set that we are using so one way to get the right set of parameters is to do a grid search among all uh, the parameter space so in this case i chose four variables but you could choose many so one is change point prior scale, seasonality prior scale, uh, daily seasonality true and false. We know that daily seasonality is there, so it is, should be true. Uh, but for this exercise, I'm giving two options. And then seasonality, either it should be additive or multiplicative. So there is a, um, a module in sklearn called model selection. And within that, there is something known as parameter grid. So if you create a dictionary of all the possible values and you, you give as input argument to parameter grid, it will list out all possible parameters. So if you see here, um, the, if you list this uh, as a list, the parameter grid is specifying all possible combinations. It's in a way a cross uh, product of uh, all those four variables. So this is a convenient way of specifying it. And then mm -hmm. uh, here I'm using two metrics, MAPES and RMS, RMSs. Um, I'm going through each of those models and uh, I am capturing MAPE and RMSs. So here I'm inputting uh, my profit model with uh, these as known options and the others one, daily seasonality, seasonality mode, change prior scale and seasonality prior scale with the whatever the parameter is there those values are given as input <coughs> the other ones um, like country holidays or seasonality or regressors and uh, add adding by default and then i am fitting a training data set so in order to do validation, there are two ways. One is to give how many initial days are needed to use in the training data set and how many days uh, it should move forward. And the horizon is where we are predicting and the duration that we are predicting. So we are using first 730 days, predicting 765 days, moving by 180 days and then predicting 365 days forward and so on. But this is uh, ideal process and this is probably something that needs to use to test for models that go into production but here I'm using two cutoffs where I'm saying use the data prior to this and um, the data that comes later needs to be um, evaluated same thing I'm using this cutoff and I'm, uh, I'm predicting 365 days after this cutoff so there, uh, so it's, it's there is a cross validation function which I imported and uh, from profit adapt and I'm performing.
and dfp does a performance matrix for these values and i'm copying these uh, maps um, as well as rmsc into respective uh, lists so once uh, all, uh, once it goes through each iteration and find rmscs and maps uh, all i'm doing here is uh, adding those um, parameters and corresponding maps and rmscs and creating a data frame this way i would know which combination gave best results to get the best parameters you have to do npr mean of maps that way uh, of all parameters that will give the index so that way you know which um, index this will give the index and you are looking at that particular row and getting that particular set of parameters so here you can see the these are all possible parameters and i'm running through each of those parameters it takes a long time to go to finish this one uh, i'm sure it took uh, more than an hour um, but in the end we came up with a so this is what happened so these are all our uh, all the parameters and corresponding map and rmss so and then total time taken is um, so it's about close to two and a half hours between two and a half hours and three hours and this is the final set of parameters that are um, ideal and you can see map value for um, this particular set uh, let's see probably this is seasonal demo is true these two 1.0 um, i think it's not here but uh, the value that came the best is i think it should print map somewhere here um, I think this probably did the map 0 0.0964 which is the best uh, for this combination or is there anything that is better yeah I think this one is probably the best one 89238 so this is the set of uh, parameters that gave the best results so that is what we have it here and uh, we can finally f create a model with those parameters by using the best parameters daily seasonality best parameters seasonality mode and so on and then you fit the same things that we have done before now you make a future data set and try to predict test data set and you run through the model and this one gave a map of 0 0.098 9.8 percent definitely it's an improvement over 1.07 that we have seen before so we improved uh, map results by close to 10 percent again um so this is how we come up with a set of right para right set of parameters to do profit model and this model can be saved and uh, deployed into uh, production before uh, we there are definitely scope for there is definitely scope for improvement and uh, to understand where our model is not performing better there are a couple of ways to do the analysis so we have our test data set and our prediction so we can you know you can see that you can look at manually how the plots are the y hat is in red and the y is in blue so definitely it's underperforming at certain times um yeah, I mean more or less periodically so somehow this peak should be improved and uh, you know if you say the peak should be improved here some you know but this here it should be lay low so on average I, I guess maybe it ended up being um, uh, underperforming around the peaks um, so it, if you dig a little bit deeper or zoom in a little bit you see that uh, at certain times this is not performing um, the other t other times i think it it's doing a decent job again this is zooming in even further this is zooming in even further so there are places where it's matching really well and there are other places where it's underperforming now uh, here it's doing um, oh it, this is doing over performance but it's failing to predict these tips so the other way of looking at the data is to compute the residuals 
you where you do merged y minus merged y hat and do uh, and create a data set uh, like uh, the way we did for visualization and you do the same visualization but instead of a true value now you do for residuals so as you can see here um, ideally the residual should be around zero mean should be around zero uh, but you, you do understand that there is a quite a bit of variation uh, around around the hours uh, 15 to 19 uh, so that needs to be looked at uh, can we do something about this particular um, hours to reduce the variance uh, again in terms of uh, monthly residual plot you see it should be around zero but uh, february month i think it's underperforming for sure and uh, other months i think they are not overperforming but most of them are actually underperforming um, so something needs to be done definitely for february month um, and ag again for uh, for weekly we can also do residual plots and we can see that uh, saturday and sunday um, they are not so in they, they are overperforming uh, whereas other weeks they are underperforming so these kind of analysis can help us uh, uh, create new features and add to our regressors to to do slightly better job than what we did here so finally uh, once a model is done we can save the model uh, pro um, as a pickle file and if you want to deploy in production we can take this pickle file and then uh, we can apply our forecast for the duration that we need to do um, so one more um, thing about uh, we can also do daily forecast if you are running the same data set. So my um, daily accuracy is about maybe is about 0 0.110 which can be useful to for comparison let's say slow performing models for example there is a model known as TBATS uh, which can help to um, model multiple seasonality. This is similar to exponential smoothing but you can um, code for multiple seasonalities and you can do transformation on the data um, box cost transformations uh, but it is generally slow. So in order to compare uh, the results of uh, profit with uh, TBATS I did a, a daily level uh, forecast and uh, its corresponding metrics. So when I did this uh, the uh, accuracy I think it was 0 0.12 let's see it was not uh, better than uh, so it was about 0 0.081 uh, the maybe 0 0.081 compared to um, uh, definitely in line with what we have seen with uh, profit so this is one method when your data is not too deep uh, or not too granular maybe at a level then you can definitely code you can see the coding here for uh, for uh, the for the series is uh, given in this way so this is weekly this is monthly and this is yearly uh, that way you are capturing uh, multiple seasonalities and the coding is fairly straightforward if you want to do for uh, a quarter also you can do that um, so this kind of seasonal periods specification is made simpler in TBATS model. There are other models that I did not discuss, but I'll briefly mention this is uh, MSTL. Uh, we did uh, decomposition, seasonal decomposition. So if you want to do decomposition um, at weekly, monthly and uh, yearly, multi multiple seasons, then you can do use this uh, MSTL model, which is fairly uh, not so slow. Uh, it can run fast. Uh, so you can see here uh, it, it, it does a seasonal plots, decomposition, seasonal 30, seasonal 7. This is weekly and this is seasonal 365. Now, <clears throat> so these are various. There are these are all the options that uh, you have uh, here. So, but uh, overall, I think uh, before I end this uh, video, I just want to uh, reiterate what we covered today. We looked at hourly energy data, which is much more granular 
uh, when compared to the toy data set that we looked in the past and we have seen how to visualize uh, data by um, various granularity by hour by week by month and then um, uh, we did it in ETS decomposition we also did a forecast but uh, with Arima uh, using auto Arima and it did not do a good job also, we, we looked at how to resample uh, at a different uh, daily level or weekly and monthly level when the data is uh, too granular. Um, so either auto arima or exponential smoothing, they did not do a decent job, especially this is one of the weakness that we cannot specify multiple seasonalities within these auto arima and exponential smoothing functions. And profit is uh, definitely preferred over other methods here. Um, and we have seen various options, uh, how to add custom seasonalities, um, uh, how to do add regressors, how to do capping, and how to do grid search. Uh, finally, we also looked at uh, error analysis. So uh, then finally, uh, how to save the model for production use is also looked at. So hopefully uh, this uh, video gives an idea about how to do a time series analysis uh, on um, more granular and uh, with a data set that has a lot, lot of uh, records. Now, with this, I end this video.